The C500 Mark II now sits alongside the C700 FF, C300 Mark II, and C200 in Canon's Cinema EOS lineup. And at first glance, the cameras can appear fairly similar on the surface. So we thought we would break down some of the differences between the cameras in terms of specifications and design, and take a look at the bigger picture of this lineup now that the C500 Mark II has joined the family. So let's start with the entry level option, the C100 Mark II. And this has been on the market for a while now, but it is still a current camera. I really am hopeful that this will get a refresh at some point soon, but right now, if all you need is a simple workhorse camera to do real-time 1080p, this is still a fantastic choice despite its age. It's simple and it's easy to use, and it has a very space-efficient codec to dual SD cards, and if you need better quality than that, you can use an Atomos Ninja 5 to record the HDMI output as lovely 1080p ProRes files. There's nothing fancy here, but in some ways, that's exactly why it still appeals to people. Like I said though, I would love to see a 4K upgrade to this if Canon added their full dual pixel AF system and a space efficient 4K codec like the MP4 side of the C200 maybe, this would be a really popular entry level model for the lineup. Sitting above the C100 Mark II is what was the newest entry in the lineup before the C500 Mark II announcement, the C200. I really like this camera and it slots in very well as a lower end version of the C500 Mark II. Both have RAW, they have the similar log formats, similar layout, same autofocus performance. In fact, as an A camera and a B camera, a C500 Mark II and a C200 is gonna be a fantastic combination. But just as a standalone camera, for those that can't reach the price point of the C500 Mark II, the C200 is a fantastic choice. You miss out on that full frame sensor, the higher resolution, and the modular design, but the C200 is at a significantly lower price point, and if the C500 Mark II becomes popular in the industry, the C200 is only going to get more relevant and widely used as a result. So for corporate and commercial work, or lower budget narratives, the C200 is a fantastic choice. If you need broadcast codecs though, the C300 Mark II is the first camera in the lineup which is really going to meet your needs. Like the C100, the C300 Mark II has been on the market for a while now and is another one I would love to see Canon refresh. The C300 has always been the model in the lineup that Canon have seen as being for those broadcast users. You get fantastic 12-bit 1080p or 10-bit 4K XFAVC, a very sturdy and durable body, and Canon's dual pixel AF, which of course is fantastic for quick paced broadcast work. The C500 Mark II does make the C300 II seem a little big though, because this can be used in a much smaller and lighter setup, which is of course a big benefit for those broadcast users that need to travel light and portable. But for that reason alone, it could be a reason for broadcast users to look at the C500 Mark II rather than the C300 Mark II. The 500 Mark II doesn't have that 12-bit 1080p though that the C300 Mark II has, so if you need that for your work, the C300 Mark II is still the clear choice. Now we get to the new kid on the block, the C500 Mark II. And this is where we start to see those higher than 4K resolutions, because it can do 5.9K, but only in the RAW formats. That does mean though that its 4K XFAVC codec is downsampled from a higher resolution sensor, which is gonna mean better image quality overall. So even when you aren't actually recording that higher resolution, it is still a big advantage for the C500. And it's the first option to get that large format sensor for that full frame look. The C500 Mark II is in many ways a jack of all trades camera for Canon. It really holds its own in each of the markets that the other cameras are specifically designed for. We'll do future videos talking about how this is specifically suited to different sectors of the industry, but I think the C500 Mark II is looking like a really solid owner-operator camera, capable of doing nearly everything a client may ask of you. 
You get the sensor and the image quality of the high-end C700 FF, the size and the portability of the C200, and the 4K broadcast codecs of the C300 Mark II. Right now, this is looking like the most attractive overall camera in Canon's lineup, in my opinion, as it just ticks so many boxes. Above the C500 Mark II, you get the C700 and the C700 FF. These are the full-blown production cameras, definitely designed for larger productions where you have a crew. Everything about their design is based around a team operating this camera, rather than one single person. For the most part though, to be honest, there's little, apart from ergonomics, that these offer which the C500 Mark II doesn't. So for most people, the C500 Mark II is going to be the clear way forwards. The C700 FF is for when you want a bigger version to make your life easier on a set with a large crew. So, that's Canon's current Cinema EOS lineup as of late 2019. I always think it helps to zoom out a little bit and look at the manufacturer's whole range when you're trying to understand a specific new camera and where it fits, especially a camera with as many features as the C500 Mark II. So I hope you found this video useful and if you have any questions at all just let us know in the comment section and of course if you're interested in the C500 Mark II make sure you get your name on that pre-order list by speaking to our sales team or heading over to prov.co.uk. We're going to be doing lots more videos on the C500 Mark II so subscribe to the channel and keep an eye out for those. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.